Hey coders, and welcome to the video for learning the basics of Express.js. Express is a node framework which is used for creating RESTful APIs. So before we get started with the video, there's a couple of assumptions that need to be known. First of all, you have node installed, you have an editor installed, you have nodemon installed globally as an npm package. And lastly, you have postman installed, which you can see on the right side of my screen here, which is used for hitting our endpoints on our Express server to test them. So let's go ahead and get started. We can first of all run npm init f to create a package.json file which is needed for installing node dependencies or node modules in our project. So since we're going to need some, we can also just run npm install, save, and then put the first module, which is express. We also need the body parser module. And then lastly, we're going to be using lodash for some of our examples. All right, so now that npm install is done running, we can go ahead and create a new file called index.js which we're going to be using for declaring our Express app. So I'll go ahead and open that file up. And to start off, let's go ahead and require those modules we just downloaded. For example, Express, um, Lodash, and Body Parser. So we can do const express is equal to require express. We do const body parser is equal to require body parser. And then lastly, we can do the same thing with Lodash. All right, so now that we have our dependencies included at the top of our file, we can go ahead and declare another variable called app, and we're going to set that equal to a new instance of the express function. So app now is what's used for configuring our express app, such as defining routes, setting the port, defining middleware, etc. <clears throat> so one of the first things we want to do is enable our app to process and parse JSON body responses from Postman or from the client. So we can do app.use body parser.json. And then finally we can do app.listen and give it a port number to be listening on. So now at this point I can run nodeman on that file we created, which should host a server or an express server on port 8080. So let's go ahead and do app the type of the request, so for instance, you can do a get request, post request, or put request, etc. And in this case, we want to do a get request on, let's say, slash notes, right? Because we want to keep track of notes that the user is putting to the system and fetching back. So the first argument is a string with the endpoint, and the second argument will be a callback with rec and res as the parameters, where rec is the request coming in, and res is the response you're going to send back. So in our case, let's go ahead and do a res.status to send back the 200 code, and also send back an array of notes. And at this point, we don't have notes declared. So let's go ahead and go up to the top, and again, do const notes equals to an array. And let's just go ahead and populate it with one note with name, my note, and text will just be, here is some random text. So now when I save that, Nodeman will restart the server. I should be able to go up here to Postman and do a request on localhost 8080 slash notes. And when we do so, we get a status of 200 and we get the array of our notes. So that's pretty cool, right? We created an express app with one endpoint called notes, which when you do a get request on it, will return you an array of notes. So just to demonstrate a second endpoint, let's go ahead and do app.post slash notes. Again, the callback is still the same, rec and res parameters. But at this point, what we want to do is we want to say notes.push rec.body, where rec.body is the JSON payload we send to the server. And then finally, we always need to send back some type of response or else our express server will just kind of freeze up. So we can do res.status, do 100, and then send back, let's just say, the same note that we sent in originally on the request. So I'll go ahead and save this. And now we can test it by changing the request type up here. Instead of git, we can do a post request. We can go to body. We can click raw. We can click JSON. We go ahead and start declaring some type of JSON object. So we'll say name equals note two, 
and then text will be hi world. So now when I send this, we get a status 200 back, and we get the original payload that we sent in as a response, as we declared on line 24 here. So that's pretty awesome. We have an Express app which does a get that can serve up a get request to slash notes. It also has a post request to slash notes where we can add notes to the system. And then again, you can also do you know app dot put or app dot patch or delete. Right, those are the keywords that Express accepts for the methods. So a second feature, which I need to explain, is how do you get query string parameters that it passed in. So for instance, in here, if we wanted to say filter by, I don't know, a text world, how do we make sure that it only returns the notes that have world in the text? So first of all, if we were to come back to our get request, we can kind of change the log logic a little bit to make it a little bit more complicated to support that feature. So first of all, we'll say declare another constant called filter and set that equal to rec dot query, which is the query string passed in, which would be any of these as a object. And then finally the keyword, which we're going to use filter. And then if filter is defined, we can do some logic else. We do the original logic that we did before. And then if we do have a filter, what we want to do is go ahead and say matches equals to, we're going to use a low dash filter, notes, and what we want to do is just filter through all of our notes and find any of them that match that same um, text filter that we passed in. So in this case, we can say return note.text.index of filter not equal to negative one. So for instance, if we were to search for world, it runs through every single note that has the, has the text world or has world in its text and it's going to return that to us. So now at this point, we can say res.status 200.send matches. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And I'll go ahead and add a world to this so we can actually test it. So up here, we do a get request that filters world. When we send it, we get a response back, right? But if we were to change this instead of world, we do zzzz or something. When we do the request, we get nothing back because nothing matched the filter. So the whole point of that little example was to explain how to access the query string, which is rec.query. <clears throat> and the last thing I'm going to explain for the whole URL parameters is how do you do URL string parameters. So for instance, let's say we want to do a get request on slash notes slash the name, my note. How would we do that in Express? So going back to our routes, we can go ahead and define a new route called app.get, give it slash notes, and then this is where we specify some variable or regex variable, which is pretty much going to be set determining or depending on the URL that we send in. And again, rec.res for the callback. And in this case, we can just do res.status 200 send do a find method where we're going to pass in notes note actually in this case we can just say name is equal to rec dot params dot id and let's change id to name so now when we save this we should be able to search for slash my note and get a response back So you see we got my note back, and then if I were to just pass in something arbitrary that won't match, we get an empty string back. All right, so again, that example was mainly to demonstrate how to access the URL parameters. So first of all, if we were to pass in something after notes, such as GGG, we need to define a route that has colon, a variable name, and then inside our callback function, we can access that by doing rec.params Dot name. There's a last piece of functionality that Express provides, which is called middleware functions, which is very important to kind of glance over. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So let's say you want to add some type of authentication to the post endpoint, where you have an authorization header in your request 
and if the password doesn't match what the server expects, we go ahead and send back an unauthorized um, or unauthentication 403 status code back. So to do that, you probably want to use middleware, which to do that in Express, we can go up here, define some new middleware called is authorized equals a function with rec res next. And then we can say const header, actually const authorization is equal to rec.headers.authorization. Then we say if it's set and equal to testing. We can go ahead and call the next function. So this is the key part of the middleware. If you don't call this next function, it's not going to continue on to the next function or endpoint in our route. So for instance, if we were, were to take is authorized and put it in front of our callback here, if this does not call next, this callback will never be called. So instead, if this is never called, what we need to do is just send back a status code of let's say 403 and send back some type of error saying you provided the wrong password. So I'll go ahead and save that and give that a test. So first of all, if I change this endpoint to post and just change the URL to slash notes, make sure the body's still set. When we send this, we get back a 403 forbidden, which is expected and sent back on line 21 here. And then we get the error message here, which is this whole send method that's attached to the res. So now in Postman, if we were to go into the headers and go ahead and add an authorization header and just add the password testing here. Now when we click send, it'll hit this middleware first. This is equal to testing here. So it's gonna call the next function, which means it's gonna go and pass from here to this function here. And at this point, we can start doing our normal logic. And additionally, we can set specific things on the request to be later used on our um, actual endpoints or route endpoints. So for instance, if I want to do rec dot is authorized equals true here, and I come down here and print that out, it'll print out true when it does hit this endpoint. So again, I'll go ahead and just do that post request. And you see down here that variable set. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the Express.js tutorial. As a recap, we discovered how to bring in the Express module and use it in an application, how to use body parser to process JSON requests, how to define routes, how to do different route types such as git, post, put, delete, etc. Um, how to parse query string parameters, how to parse URL parameters, how to parse the body. And then lastly, we went over middleware, which is another important feature of Express. Well, again, thanks for watching, and if you have any feedback at all on my videos, feel free to leave me a comment. All right, thanks, and have a good day.